basically left rotate his head, aren't I? I'm going to flex it, left rotate it, but either side bend it left, which would be an incongruent lock, or side bend it right, which would be a congruent lock. Yeah. So what works best for me? Well, we'll flex him, left rotate him, side bend him left. That's okay. Side bend him right. That's okay. Doesn't bother me. I can do either one. So I've been able to do either one now. What optimal? Well, I'm driving C1 forwards, aren't I? The force is going to be forwards for C1. C. C1. I'm going to push C2, yeah? And C2 is going to move C1, isn't it? Yeah? Now, I'm holding you back here, so you ain't going to move far, hopefully. But let's say I do... Let's say I'm really being puristic about that and I don't want to stress this joint out when I push it. We're talking about the AO joint now. So I'm going to push that forward. Now, in this flexion, if I lock this in flexion and I drive C1 forward, that's going to push it further onto flexion. Yeah? So I can either lock this in extension or I can side bend it to the left and that will take it out of flexion again anyway. Is that okay? But the second will be still be locked up. Cold? Yeah. Second will still be locked out, but th this left joint isn't at its end of range. So, in our ideal concerns, it doesn't make much difference to me as far as the technique is concerned. We'll come down onto C2 there, we'll flex him, side bend him left, relax, side, side bend him left, rotate him left, and now I'm going to thrust upwards and forwards, aren't I? Mm -hmm. The thrust is in that direction. Hmm? We, we've done an extension to try and keep that out of that. Yeah, you could have gone through extension. But again, ideally, considering the arteries, yeah. better do flexion. Well, I mean, for safety in terms of testing purposes, like if you do it in extension, you can't do the congruent lock, you need the incongruent. So you're not essentially in this position. Well, I did an incongruent lock anyway. Yeah. Inflection. But I mean, you have the option here. We're no, I think if I do this in extension, all right. So I've got them extended. Yeah. Um, I still need to rotate him to the left. So I can still side bend him to the left. Now, if I side bend to the left, no, I'm okay. I'm extending the right joint. You said the left joint. No. Side bend him right. So you're saying side right. Side bend him right, right, rather. Yeah. Yeah. Saying this, the yeah. So I've got. But I don't have to do an incongruent lock. Yeah. Is that okay? Jump down and put it down. We're going to do the other. Now, this is really picky crap. Seriously. Um, but this is probably ideal. Whether it's worthwhile messing about with this. But it doesn't make any real difference to the technique. So, um, okay, so I want C2, or I will be in a minute. There. I'm going to side bend, uh, flex him, side bend him. Right, rotate him. Sorry, side bend him right, rotate him right. And then thrust anterior and up, so my thrust is in that direction from there. So, in terms of flexion extension, it really doesn't matter. Oh, no. Did you side bend your right or left? What's that? Did you side bend your right or left? Left. Okay. Can you rotate it on the right? Yeah, both side bend. As you said, right. Okay. So, I mean, how is it different than, in terms of the U-joint, you check anterior, posterior, on those sides. What's the difference in no. those? the same plane. Yeah, so the difference, with the, the difference with the U-joint is, and don't forget, you can manipulate the U-joint indirectly via the translation. Come on. So, there's this one, you can manipulate the left joint, not by the translation, but by the rotation. So I can rotate them to the left and I can manipulate either of the two joints and never know which joint it is I've manipulated. What we're arguing here is, um, we can do the same thing, but more specifically over the joint by locking the AO joint. Now, the, uh, why would you do this? Well, there's pedants around who want to do this, who are picky and want to do this, and want other people to do it as well. Well, there is another reason. Let's say I've got a patient with an car accident where they jammed up the AA joint and the AO joint is inflamed. 
I still want to manipulate the AA joint and maybe I can't reduce the inflammation in the AO joint until I get the AA joint moving. So now I've got to protect the AA joint. Now we're locking to crack. All of your locking now is about how do I set this up so I can thrust on this without irritating the inflamed joint. And now you're going to screw about with this. And almost certainly what you're going to do here is flex the inflamed joint. And everything's going to be based around that. Yeah. Well, change your left rotation to keep it from coming Well, no, it doesn't. I mean, it's not about what's good for the manipulation. It's good. What's good for a particular joint? The manipulation is very much a secondary concern here. Now, if I don't get this joint all the way to its end of range, right up against its barrier, it means that I'm going to have more amplitude on the lift. That's what it means. All right? And that's not optimal, but it's what you do sometimes. 